Hi there, I'm Lisa. And I'm Sarah. And welcome to another episode of Naperville Public Library's Book Buffet, an ongoing video series where we serve you samples of books that share a common genre or theme. As per usual, the books that we present to you today can be found in print format and or as digital books. And the three platforms that you can find these digital books on are Hoopla, Access 360, and Libby, which is the app for Overdrive. So today's topic for the book buffet is collections. Sarah, I think you and I agree we were both super excited to choose books for this theme because there is just, there is so much to pick from and there are so many types of collections from which to choose. I had so much fun. This was sort of like a kid in a candy shop moment for me and I didn't really expect that going in, but I just felt like I had the whole world in front of me when we did this. Yes, yes. So Sarah, I agree with all of that and more. So please get it started. What did you pick to share with us first for collections? All right, my first title was Florida. This is a collection of 11 stories. And surprise, surprise, they do take place in Florida. <laughs> Lauren Croft does a really good job of sort of blending the Florida landscape with everyday life in a way that I found very readable and very much captured my interest because it sort of felt like the wildness of Florida interacted with everyday life in a way that felt as though it was sort of mirroring the dangers that you encounter unexpectedly in everyday life, just like you would accidentally happen upon, like, say, an alligator or something in Florida. Her writing style somehow is both no-nonsense and sort of precise and simultaneously surprising and sort of, like, stuns you at moments. There's one story that specifically stuck with me, um, and it's the story of this mom who is left alone in a cabin with her two young kids in remote Florida. And at one point, she gets on a chair to change a light bulb, falls off the chair, knocks her head, and is just, like, laying there dazed on the floor. That moment just sticks in my head of her just, like, laying on the floor, her kids like crying, asking her if she's okay, and her just like staring up at the ceiling, confused and out of sorts. There's just something about it that I can't stop thinking about. And I wish I could explain to you what it was about that moment that just sort of shook me and continues to shake me even after I've read this. What a testament to powerful writing that this author was able to evoke that deep, emotion and unsettled feeling with you just from words on the page. I mean, I just, I so admire writers who can do that. Yeah, I really found myself admiring her too, because I, I mean, in the, in that same story, there's like stuff about how a panther might be lurking around the cabin. <laughs> oh! And like compared to her falling off the chair, like the panther is nothing. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know how you take like this sort of like background deep. Yeah, how do you go from there to that? <laughs> yeah. Right. And I was just like, well, forget the big cat. Like I, like what is really like visceral to me is just this mom not being able wow. to, to cope, you know? I don't know. I'm just going to keep yeah. thinking about it for the rest of time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was really excited when you picked this book because I have been meaning to read this for a long time and you know how it is. It, it just takes time for books to get to the top of your list. But I really tend to gravitate toward fiction that is about ordinary people, ordinary families who are just kind of going along and then they find themselves in extraordinary situations. And from what I've heard about this book and from what you have just told us, it seems like this really fits that bill. And so now this just really makes me <laughs> want to read this even more. Oh, for sure. Like if that's what you're interested in, then this mm -hmm. is for you. What's your first pick? So my first book is very different from the book that you just shared. Mine is a collection of columns by Mary Schmeek called Even the Terrible Things Seem Beautiful to Me Now. 
And Mary Schmeek is a syndicated columnist for the Chicago Tribune. She's been writing for them for, I believe, over 25 years. She has also won the Pulitzer Prize for her writing. I love Mary Schmeek's writing. I usually feel that she is speaking directly to me. I also really admire how varied her columns are. I think she's in the Tribune three times a week, twice a week, and then on Sundays. And her columns range from themes about family. She is one of eight children, so she has a lot of family stuff to talk about. She writes a lot about her mother, who passed away several years ago. She will write about local Chicago people who she meets, and she feels they have an important story to tell. Sometimes her whole column will be a poem that she has written. Sometimes her whole column will be a list of 10 books that I think you should read this winter. She's so varied in how she writes. And actually, in a stroke of perfect timing, her column this morning, which I read right before I came to work today, and as we're filming, today is Friday, October 23rd, 2020, she wrote about voting. And not about who to vote for or any of the political issues that are going on with this election. She, she wrote about physically how she had decided to vote this year and how it made her feel. And I read that column and I just thought, Mary Schmeek, you have done it again. This is exactly what I am thinking. I just, I admire her writing so much. If you've never read her and are interested in exploring a writer with a very vivid, versatile voice, I highly recommend this book. If you're a Mary Schmeek fan already, this is a great kind of walk down memory lane for you because it's a great uh, sampling of her columns over the past 25 years. I just, I love her. I love columns. There's just something about them. I don't know. There's something about the connection there that I think you're speaking to here that I also really enjoy. Something about yeah. someone coming and telling you sort of about their lives, but also about your own that I, I really... I can really get into. So I could see myself picking this up for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And books of columns in particular, I think are great if you just need something to keep on hand, if you want to read in short little bursts, because I mean, a column is by definition kind of bite-sized. You know, you can, you can just read one or two and then go on to something else. Not only can Mary Schmeek write about lighter things and ordinary things. She is so talented at writing about difficult subject matter as well. I mean, she's just so talented in so many ways. I just, again, I, I love her. Yeah, this sounds really good. I am going to put it on my list and hopefully it won't take me too long to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> Always a challenge. <laughs> so what is your next collection? My next collection is a collection of poems by Ocean Buong. It's called Night Sky with Exit Wounds. I do not read a lot of poetry, so I will just throw that out there to begin with. I don't want anyone watching this to think that I am a poetry expert by any means. <laughs> That said, I really enjoyed this collection. It's so interesting and it's an interesting perspective because Ocean was born in Vietnam and he moved to the States with his family when he was two, I believe. His grandfather was an American soldier and his grandmother was a Vietnamese woman and they met during the war. He has an interesting family history and I feel like that adds a lot to the poems and it's important to understand sort of where he's coming from in order to understand the poetry itself. This collection was released in 2016. It's his first full length debut poetry collection. Okay. I think there's 35 poems in total. And they cover a variety of themes, but a big portion of them are about family and identity and grief and war and just sort of grappling with who you are. There's a lot of, of sort of his grief over not really knowing his father in here and just his experience as a Vietnamese American mm -hmm. and just... Uh, 
thinking about war in terms of its long-term effects on different generations. So there's a lot going on in here and definitely an emotional collection of poems and it's definitely gonna stick with me for a while. I had to reread quite a few poems to know what was going on because I am not a poetry expert, but I think poetry often needs rereading. So don't let that stop you. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, you often have to parse out what's going on in a poem, but I think it's made all the more beautiful for that. There are many phrases I won't forget, and there are many oh. sort of juxtapositions that I will continue to think about. And I just, I recommend it for anyone who either A, loves poetry, or B, wants to explore some more poetry. There are also many guides online, I will say, if you struggle with poetry. There are people to help you, so don't uh, feel like you have to go it alone if you hit a poem and you're not sure what's happening. Yeah. Oh, and I will say this is not available in print at the library. It's only available uh, through digital formats. And I will say it's better to read it on a tablet or a computer screen so that you have more space because sometimes the format gets wonky on the small phone screen and that does not help you okay. <laughs> when you're trying to read the poems. Yeah, no, that's important. That's a great tip. Thank you for sharing that. I'm kind of in the same boat as you are. I do not read a lot of poetry, but when I do, I really appreciate how with poetry, literally every word counts. Every word was chosen for a purpose. I do enjoy reading poetry just for the appreciation of the craft. And I have not read anything by this author, so I think I probably will take a look at this. I'm, I'm glad you picked this as one of your books to share. Yeah, I enjoy this even more than I thought I would. And I think he's also just released a debut novel, so. Yes. You can check that out too if you want. <laughs> so what's your next pick, Lisa? My next pick is a collection of short stories by Lucia Berlin. It's called Emmanuel for Cleaning Women. The author actually passed away in 2004. So this collection was published after her death. She was quite prolific during her life, but not super well known. I can tell you that after reading this book, I hope that people continue to discover her because this woman could write. I nearly picked this one. Did you? To read and yeah, but I did not. So I'm very, I'm so excited to hear about what you, you have to say. Yeah, it's, it's hard to describe this. Um, I think there's a little over 40 short stories in the book. Some of them are extremely short. One of them is literally only a page and a half. The adjective that I kept thinking of when I was reading this book was gritty. The subjects that she chooses is very gritty. Her characters are very gritty and down to earth. She writes a lot about disenfranchised people. She writes a lot about immigrants. She writes about people who do jobs that many of us don't want to do. She writes about a, a lot about people who need assistance, whether it's medical assistance or psychiatric assistance or just neighborly assistance. A lot of the people that she writes about are people that are somehow in need of some sort. Some of the topics she writes about, I can't lie, they're kind of tough. As a warning, she does write about alcoholism at times. Uh, she writes about illness. She writes about violence, not in every story, but in a lot of them. So that's just something to be aware of. But I would really encourage you not to let those topics turn you off of her writing, if, if it's at all possible, because she really sets her scenes well and you feel like you're there. She also has this way of writing where her language is very spare. It's not flowery language at all, but she's writing along in this very spare, definitive voice. And then she just hits you with a line that will stop you in your tracks. She was, she was a very talented writer and I wish more people knew of her. 
Well, this was already on my list, as I said, mm -hmm. but I definitely am going to keep it there based on what you've told me because mm -hmm. it sounds very good. And like we finally get some narratives from people we might not normally get them from, which is exciting. So yeah, I'm going to have to take a look. I'm excited about this one. Yeah, there are some other books by her that have also been published. I definitely want to read more of her. And that's one of the biggest recommendations that I personally can ever give about a writer that I want more. So what is your last book today? My last book is called Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. This is a collection of short stories that is strange <laughs> and sort of haunting, mostly what she talks about in a sort of fairy tale-esque way is like women's bodies and their experiences and their, their memories and their desires. So it's a lot about the female experience in here, but also told in a very sort of odd way that you would not necessarily expect. And I really like that sort of blending of fairy tale myth vibes with actual present day experiences. It's a very interesting sort of way to, to tell those kinds of stories. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here. So there's like a story where a woman has a green ribbon around her neck and her husband really wants her to take it off because she never does and it's like this mystery and she refuses to do so. I'm looking at the cover, so I'm assuming that the cover is based on that particular story. Yes, I think it is. Yeah, so there's that story, which I think opens the, the collection. And that really just talks a lot about different desires between, you know, like the husband and the wife and the woman in the relationship really just wanting one thing to be hers, and it's this ribbon. It sounds like some of these stories might be good book club stories. I mean, just from the little that you've told me about that one, it sounds like you could go pretty deep into the meaning there. Yeah, I think there's a lot to pull apart here. Like you can really dig in deep and, and search for, for various meanings in these stories. There's also the longest story in this book is sort of a reimagining of Law and Order SVU, which is like the special victims unit. I don't know if people are familiar with that, but it's, <laughs> it's that, but with like doppelgangers and ghosts and girls with bells for eyes. <laughs> really interesting. I don't know, all of it's very interesting. And there's like girls who are like vanishing into prom dresses. There's a lot to read in here, even though I, I believe there's only eight stories total, but- Oh, wow. It seems like there's a lot going on in them. I have never read this author. I know that she is one of your favorites. I think I've um, basically read anything that she's published <laughs> at this point. <laughs> but see, again, to me, when someone says that to me, that's a signal to me that I need to take a look at this author. And I just, this is very unlike books that I usually read, but from what you've told me, I think I would really be into this. It's so good. I wish I could, I just, I want to scream from like somewhere, just like everyone needs to read this book. <laughs> I will try to read this soon because yeah, I think I would really like this. I think I'm going to reread it soon since I've read it a while ago. I think I could pull more out of it if I read it again. So All let right. me know if you're going to read it. We can read it together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mini book club. <laughs> so fun. Lisa, what's your last pick? My last book is The Case of the Vanishing Blonde by Mark Bowden. This is actually a collection of feature-length articles that the author has previously written about true crime. I personally love reading true crime. It's one of my favorite genres. And when I heard about this book, at first I thought, well, okay, a collection of true crime stories, you know, same old thing. No, not the same old thing. Number one, I had not heard of any of these true crime stories before. And B, the way he writes is so good. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of meat to these stories because they are almost like short novels uh, because when he wrote these for these magazines, you know, they were feature length stories. These aren't just little columns. Three of the stories have the same main detective in them. So that's kind of fun. You kind of get to know this guy a little bit. My favorite one, I believe it was called A Million Years Ago. 
And it was the story of this murder that happened back in the 80s in Los Angeles, and it became a cold case. And then in the 2000s, they started kind of a task force to really dig into these cold cases and see what they could find out now that DNA testing had come so far. And the detectives assigned to this case discovered that a main suspect was another detective, a female detective, in the Los Angeles County Police Department. And the way the author takes you through this story, how they question her, is so awesome. You feel like you're in the room with them, and we know that she's a suspect, but she doesn't know. But she's a detective, and she knows how this works. And so it's like this push and pull, and she's slowly discovering that, hey, I'm just not here for them to get some information from. They actually think I'm involved. And I won't tell you how it ends, because I don't want to wreck it, but... I was torn between wanting to turn the pages really fast because I so wanted to know what was going to happen and to just slow down and savor the writing. So good. I love documentaries and things about true crime, but I don't read a lot of true crime. So maybe this would be a good dip my feet in sort of thing since it's a shorter collection of, of mm -hmm. stories. Yeah, I think this would be great for someone like me who's a big true crime fan and just wants some samples of things they haven't read at all about, they don't have any, any base knowledge of. And exactly like you said, Sarah, if you just want to dip your toe in the genre, I think this is perfect. I think there's six stories in the book. There are a couple that are more violent than others. Not all of them, but that's something to be aware of, but that's something you're sensitive to. I really enjoyed it. Well, as soon as I finish the Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix, I feel like <laughs> I'm gonna need another true crime source. So yeah. I'll keep this in mind. Yeah, and the great thing about this book and some of the other books we've already talked about, it's available on Hoopla, so you'll never be on a waiting list. You can read it immediately. Love it. All right. Well, I think that wraps up all of our books today for collections. But if you need more recommendations, please feel free to put in a personalized reading list request. The link is up in the description. And uh, one of us lovely library staff members will create a list for you based on your interests. So that's going to bring an end to this episode of The Book Buffet. We hope you've gotten at least one suggestion for something to add to your reading list. Until next time, happy reading and be well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.